What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question dealing with rate of change. This question was sent to me by a student. Thought it was pretty unique so thought I would make a video to it. So we have to find k. So the average rate of change of the function f of x equals kx squared plus 3x over the interval where x is between negative 2 and 1 is equal to 5. So as a quick review, average rate of change, what's the formula? For that well average rate of change is always going to be between two points so let's say it's between points x1 and x2 actually you know what let's maybe put different letters here let's say it's between a x values a and b well the formula for that is going to be f of a minus f of b all over a minus b or the other way around, it doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer, f of b minus f of a, all over b minus a, like that. All right? that's the average rate of change. And usually we're given these values, and we're given the function, and we have to find the average rate of change. Well, notice in this case, we're given the average rate of change. It's 5, and we're given the values, but notice the function we're given a function, but there's a constant in the function k that we're going to have to solve for, right? So the two x values that we are dealing with is negative 2 and 1. So before writing out the formula, notice when x is equal to negative 2, well, if f of x is equal to kx squared plus 3x, what's f of negative 2? going to be? Well, if we plug in negative 2 for the x values, we'll have negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2. And so this would end up being 4 over here. Negative 2 to the power of 2 is 4 times k, so we'll have 4k. And then this would end up being minus 6. So this would end up being f of negative 2. And then we'll also need f of 1. So plugging in 1 for the x values, k 1 squared is 1 times k is just k. Uh, 3 times 1 is just 3. So that's what f of 1 would be. And so we're told that the average rate of change on this interval is 5. So basically what we can do is we could say 5, the average rate of change, is equal to uh, f of, let's do uh, negative 2 minus f of 1 all over negative 2 minus 1, like that. You could also do it the other way. You could do f of 1 minus uh, f of negative 2 all over 1 minus negative 2. Just as long as these are in line, you're going to get the same answer anyway. And so from here, what we can do is we could plug in f of negative 2, the expression for that, which is 4k minus 6. So we'll have 4k minus 6 minus f of 1 is k plus 3. All over, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And then we'll have 5, like that. And so now, notice we have an equation, and we just have to solve for that k value. And so we can simplify the numerator. So notice that minus bracket k plus 3, that would end up being minus k minus 3. This bracket can just go away. So 4k minus k would give us 3k. Minus 6 minus 3 would give us minus 9. And that's going to be all over negative 3. And then from here, we can cross multiply, put the 5 over 1. And so what would happen, 5 times negative 3 would give us negative 15. And then 1 times that expression would just be that expression. And then we'll have 3k, bring the negative 9 over, negative 15 plus 9 would give us, um, what, negative 6? Divide both sides by 3, so k would be negative 2. All right, so that's what the k value would be. So the function would be negative 2 x squared plus 3x.
And then if this comes up on a test and you have extra time, you could check this answer. What you can do is you could take this function and you could take this interval, find the average rate of change on it, as we did in videos before, and then see if it does equal five. And if you do it properly, all the algebra, then you will find it does equal five. So that's a nice way to check your answer.